welcome to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this is another uh, attempt at the still shot, me moving things around. I'll try to keep things in focus. Uh, this video is to really highlight uh, two things. One is a replacement piece that I've um, redone for the site, which is to replace this sandbag emplacement. I'll talk about that in a second. And the second uh, part of the video is really to do a little bit of a review on using Army Painter's Quick Shade to do terrain pieces. So I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, uh, but first let me describe the pieces that I've done and why they were changed and how uh, hopefully I feel like they've been improved quite a bit. Uh, originally on the site I had two sandbag options before. One was um, the straight bags and there were a couple different uh, layouts of those. I apologize that the color shifts quite a bit. It seems like the bloggy is pretty sensitive to whites so it tends to go a little bit more yellow. Um, so. We'll see if I can work through that. But in any case, uh, this was one of my very first uh, freehand sculpts, whatever you want to call it. And uh, admittedly, it's pretty bad. Uh, it was uh, something I did very early on. I thought sandbags would be an easy attempt to start on. And I have been looking at this on the site for the last year and a half and loathing that I still offered it. So I finally broke down. The molds were getting a little bit tired. And I decided to redo them. Originally I offered two, I offered the straight and I offered a curve. And one of the biggest problems that I had with these pieces was their size, their scale. The bags just really, aside from their detailing and shape, they're just too big. I mean, it's just a little bit out of proportion with the miniatures. So when I redid these, I really wanted to bring them into scale. So what I did is I shrunk up the bags quite a bit and I took some more time to add in uh, quite a bit more detail on the bags. Uh, sewn seams, some fold marks where the seams were, you know, pinched together when the bags were, I'm assuming they're filled inside out and then, or filled, uh, they're sewn inside out and then turned around. Uh, so I've really tried to add in quite a bit more detail, bring the uh, bags in scale with the miniatures more, add more dynamic bag, you know, sort of uh, weight for lack of a better term so that they look like they're actually sandbags that are sitting on top of each other. I think with sandbags, you know, you can get believability fairly easily, but I've seen some really impressive bags out there. I'm not going to say I have the best sandbags on the net. What I am going to try to say is that I'm going to offer a very good sandbag model at a very, very reasonable price. So I redid the uh, round bag and I lowered the front. This is a 32 millimeter AT43 miniature. Uh, so this is a little bit bigger than Games Workshop. Games Workshop runs, um, I think this is 30, either 30 or 32. Games Workshop runs 28. And on the round emplacement, I wanted to lower it in the front and so that, um, say, a sitting machine gun crew could sit behind it or it would look more believable if there was like an artillery piece behind it, give it a little bit more playing flexibility. And you can see, um, you know, compared to the original that sits lower in the front, and you can also see that the new bags are considerably larger than the old ones. This is a full, uh, oh gosh, I want to say this is over six inches linearly wrapped around, and the new straight bags are also larger than the original. They're now a full six inches long. So I made two of the um, straight bags, a little variety, um, so they should sit anywhere from, you know, if you got really down to eye level of the miniature, they're going to sit, oh, I can't quite get low enough with the camera, but pretty close. Um, it sits right about waist height, uh, and in a 28 millimeter, it's going to come up to just, just above the belt line, I think, and that's going to work really well uh, for play and give you the, the coverage that you're looking for, you know, believably, but... Um, but not, uh, not you know, make it look like they're trying to shoot through a hole in the bag. The, um, I thought about some of the other pieces that I do like this, I actually base them so that they'll sit, actually, well, that's the other thing, is that they sit up a little bit and then they would sit up like that. So if you wanted to base these um, to add maybe barbed wire around the front or have me do that, you know, that's always another option. And that way, if they did get based, they're not going to come up too high on the miniature as well. So there are two of those styles and uh, one that's more straight across and one that's got a few a few depressions in it. Um, I'm casting these in tough stone. Tough stone is a gypsum plaster. Um, gypsum plaster, it, it's reinforced with fibers, so it's really, really hard. Um, I have seen some people who are, uh, seems like resin casting is getting more and more popular, 
and I've seen some people, you know, denouncing casting in uh, uh, plasters. But what I find is that um, plasters are really inexpensive. And again, I wanted to keep the price point low. I know that the economy is not doing very well and people are looking to get stuff on the table at a low cost. So that was one of my considerations and resins also deteriorate the molds fairly quickly. Is that in focus? Should be, there we go. So there's a little close up of the uh, sandbags just to give you a little sense of what they look like up in close detail. I also changed the color. Um, I had a much more orangey sand colored and I decided to go with uh, this color primarily because I was using the Army Painter Dip, which again, I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of, here's an unfinished bag. Um, so you can see, um, we actually, when I first cast it, you can actually see perhaps, let's see if that'll focus right. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but you can see some of the very tiny hairs coming out of the bottom. Those are part of the fibers that reinforce this, and this plaster is incredibly, incredibly strong. I've been super impressed with it. Uh, and so then when I sand it down, um, those fibers come off, and oh, there you go. I think you can see them there glinting in the light, and then the edges of those fibers come off, and uh, you won't even notice them during use. Um, this is the same plaster I use for the Hearst Arts casts, and I'm now... I've stepped up and I'm now vacuum casting all of my casts uh, pretty much unless it's a really flat tile like a floor tile. And the vacuum casting is allowing me to eliminate pretty much 100% 100 of the bubbles that are in the, the mold. I, some of my early casts, I had a few tiny bubbles in the surface of the top because I wasn't pulling enough of a vacuum to get those little extra bubbles out and I wasn't degassing the plaster so I've been learning and I think I'm getting about the best casts you can get now out of a mold and I'm pretty pleased about that as a perfectionist I want to get as close to perfect as possible so what I decided to do is I decided to try army painter and I don't dip my miniatures uh, which I, in retrospect, I, I might consider it in the future. The Army Painter shades come in three colors. I'm sure many of you have seen the product out there. Maybe you've used it, maybe you haven't. Um, and I went with the strong tone and the dark tone to see um, what the difference was and which would work better for terrain. And what I did basically is I've just given these, again, I'm trying to keep the labor on these pieces at a minimum so I can continue to offer them at a low cost. I'm going to, um, I'm just spray painting them and then I'm dipping them. And then after that, I'm giving them a dry brush. Now, one of the things about the quick shade that is awesome, <laughs> I want to say is awesome, is that it's a heavy, heavy, thick varnish. And as a result, it really adds a very protective layer to the top of the uh, piece. Uh, it's durable, and I think on miniatures as well, it's going to give you a very durable finish for your painting uh, that, you know, if, if you, like me, loathe chipped mi miniatures, then it's um, a pretty good product for that. One of the problems with it, though, is it does have a very, very glossy finish. And what I've done is I've gone over this piece with a matte clear coat. Uh, I'm not using Tester's dull coat. I might move to that as I don't think I'm getting it as dull as I'd like. And um, let's see if I can show you. Yeah, right in here where I didn't dry brush over it, you can still see a little bit of shine right in that area. Um, it's pretty hard with matte clear coats to get it perfectly dull, uh, at least the ones I'm using. I'm using, um, I'm looking over my shoulder here, Rust-Oleum's, um, uh, you know, ultra coat, uh, matte clear coat, double coverage stuff, which is a pretty good product, actually. I'm going to say their double coverage paints are really, really good. But um, then when I'm, uh, so that's not really taking it down to flat, though. And then I'm dry brushing it, which actually helps because the dry brush uh, eliminates some of the uh, sheen off of them. And overall, I've been standing them away at about a foot, two feet away from me, and they look good. So I'm pleased with how they're coming out. Again, I might be looking at Tester's Dull Coat to see if it gives me a little bit of a more matte finish. I know it's sort of the um, miniatures standard. And I've also been considering purchasing Army Painter's um, Dull Coat spray as well. But Army Painter products are a little expensive. This can, oh gosh, I can't remember what it costs, but it, it 
it was a little pricey. Um, it, it's going to go a long way for miniatures, but it is a little pricey for terrain. I, I've done um, a couple plaster buildings to see if I can speed up their painting, and I have a building that I'll show you probably after TempleCon as I'm bringing it as a little bit of a surprise. I'm trying to do a few new pieces for the TempleCon tables, which I mentioned in the last video. TempleCon, they're holding a GT. Uh, it's in Rhode Island. You should uh, come down if you're interested in playing Warhammer. I actually, they're running a... Uh, a uh, large 40k event. Anyway, it's a great event. They have War Machine. It's it's a big uh, it's a big uh, convention. But in any case, um, I used quite a bit of this to go through it on buildings, as there's a lot more coverage and a lot more uh, sort of you know indentations in the surface to uh, fill. So I don't know. I, I'm going to keep trying it out. I think it works great for the sandbags. It gives me quick and easy coverage rather than having to try to push paint into these little tiny recesses in between each bag, make sure there's no gaps. And that is one of the things with dealing with plaster is that if you miss a spot, it stands out like a sore thumb because it is a bright white cast. So um, I find it's working out pretty well for this. And if you are interested in maybe speed shading terrain, uh, I, I recommend taking a look at Army Painter's Shades and uh, see their quick shade uh, colors. The strong tone is a fairly, I mean, it is sort of <laughs> as it looks on the can, I mean, uh, but the, the strong tone really takes on more of a brown color, and the uh, dark tone is a pretty, um, it, it has a bit more of a black in it. And it really comes out when you have large areas that you're covering. You really see that color difference pretty pretty much. So this is actually using the dark tone, which gives it um, a little bit of a darker creases in the insides. And then I've, I've gone with a lighter color, like I said, compared to the old bags, which I thought were just a little bit too yellow, just a little bit too sand colored. Well, anyway, I hope you... Uh, have gotten something out of this. Not only um, I take a look at the new sandbags that will be coming up on the site. I'm going to be selling them as pairs. You can get a pair painted. You can get a pair unfinished. Um, and you can also get um, pairs of the um, uh, circular entrenchments. And uh, again, you can go to the website and you can see color pictures of these up close with uh, some other miniatures against them. So you can see them for scale. And, uh, and if you... Uh, uh, are interested in um, you know products for your miniatures to dip or whatever. I'm not getting paid by Army Painter. I bought this myself, but I just want to say it was the first time I'd tried it, and um, I was pretty impressed with it. So it's something to consider, um, even maybe on some uh, buildings or structural terrain. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back uh, pretty soon with another video. I have quite a few in the queue to get to.